General Motors has made a whole bunch of really exciting announcements lately. Well, exciting if you're the competition, because they're giving you all the breathing room you need. Marry you lead and it matters. I'm sure that's true in some universe, if not this one. But that's what we're going to chat about. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So Mark, uh, you found this great article for me this week. This is this is really inspiring. GM uh, has ditched the Origin Robo Taxi in favor of a next gen self driving Bolt. Now this is exciting to me because I didn't know about this box, this uh, symmetrical box. Uh, it looks like uh, from Westworld. Is what I think it, it looks is like. on the Westworld set, actually. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the future we all wish to live in. In a letter to shareholders, Mary said that Cruise is about to turn its focus to adapting the next-gen Bolt instead of the Origin. Um, on a scale of, you know, zero to a hundred, where's your surprise-ometer at? I'd say it's right, uh, right around uh, three or four. Yeah, I, I might be I might be right there at the three with you, because this vehicle was never going to be made. Barra said there is there is <laughs> there's regulatory uncertainty uh, with this vehicle, which, you know, doesn't have a steering wheel or pedals. Uh huh. Is that what it is, Mary? Is it regulatory uncertainty? Is that is that your your take as well, Mark? I think it's because this vehicle was not produced uh, in any volume and has no test data to show the regulators at all. And uh, you know what? Regulators tend to want to see some proof. They want to see a track record of how a vehicle performs and what the data has been showing in the miles that it has been driving in any given test city. And that's just not there. Did you know? Yeah. Did you know that my new cancer medicine uh, can't get regulatory approval, Mark? Yeah, that's not a, that's not a good thing. It's because I didn't oh. invent it yet. But if I did, you know, so... This is this is the this is the guy in high school saying, "Oh, I wouldn't date that that famous model. I, I just wouldn't. She's not pretty, dude. You would murder your own mother to date that model. You're just saying that to to look cool. It's not working. It's not working. I think we're getting a little yeah, dark." Yeah, the uh, origin, of course, was released uh, a couple of years ago uh, to fanfare on a stage, uh, but and and they talked about even where it was going to be produced. But again, it did really? not get into the testing phase. It was not shown because GM, you know, probably had it out on a, on its own internal test tracks and uh, discovered that, hey, this is going to be a, a problem. We're we're not quite there to to get this out. So it's a I'm okay with it though because look at it, this is pretty cool yeah. looking, right? I think we can all agree. Very cool, futuristic. I love that it's got numbers on it, so when it pulls up, you know which one's yours. And look at this, just as cool, just as cool. Oh, well, maybe not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the cool factor's dropped on the second photo quite a bit. I think it might have. This is. Looks like uh, somebody is trying to use a rental car from the airport to, uh, you know, as a chase car in a movie that they're going to film. It's like, just put a bunch of cameras on it. It's going to be great. You're right. There, there, there's a huge oh. difference. And there's nothing wrong with a Bolt as a as a get around vehicle, an electric vehicle. It, it's, it's great. But, and of course, the issue is GM and Cruz has to get some data behind them to find out as to whether or not the, the the package they use on these cars to see the LIDAR, the whatever they're using, they have to confirm that this whole package works and they have to have a number of vehicles out on the road. So guess what? They have bolts, they're all over the place. GM can give crews 150 of them at any given point and that was the quickest way to get this program going. I have no problem with any of these ambitions. I really don't. We give GM a hard time. All of it's warranted, but but it is still, so maybe we go a little too far. I just get the gosh darn project finished. Once it's finished, yep. you can build anything. You can build absolutely anything. Put it, you can bring the origin back. Uh, but 
I just don't know, dude. Now is not the time. You know what they really should do now instead is, uh, is instead they should show us something else that they're definitely, definitely going to build. <laughs> this thing is beautiful. It's an all electric car. Which they have said flat out, we plan to never build. <laughs> Why on earth do they go through the exercise of showing a, a, a vehicle that no one can afford, that they're never going to build? For what reason? Like, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing, guys? Did you not have anything better for these engineers to work on? Because it looks like they put a lot of work in. But come on, guys, what are you? And this had to cost a fortune, many of millions. And it's, and they, they, well, I was going to say lovely. And then we got to this weird clamshell. And, and they know right from the outset that it could never be profitable. There's no way you could recoup the money uh, on this vehicle design and manufacturer by selling it to 13 people in North America. I was going to say, I was going to say eight, but oh, you, oh, you yeah, meant all of North America. Yeah, 13, I think is too, the correct. Yeah. yeah. And one, uh, Mexican national, I think is the, is the total number. So yeah, it's guys, let's, ah, uh, let's build stuff. We're let's, let's show stuff we're going to build. And I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I hate the fact that it's not going to be built. Uh, but Oh, look, they photoshopped the wheels. That's looks like it's in motion. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe we go too far. Maybe we don't go far enough. Wouldn't that, uh, wouldn't guys, that money would... be better spent on maybe getting that second gen bolt off the ground quicker? Taking those designers no. and trying to figure out how can we no. can make a cheap, affordable electric car that is desirable? Never. Okay. Never. Uh but for real, you, you make a good point. Whoever designed those seats, can they make the bolt a little cooler? Because I bet that designer could find a way to make the bolt a little cooler without making it prohibitively expensive. It's, I understand the idea of concept cars is to push the envelope and inspire and motivate and all that, but we need to build some cars, guys. And my concern, I've had a lot of people ask me in the last couple of weeks, how does Mary still have a job? when she's clearly so terrible at it. And I say, she's not terrible at it. She's doing a different job than what you and I think she's supposed to be doing. We'd like her to be pushing electrification and GM wants her pushing whatever's the most profitable. And that means killing the EVs. She is doing what the board of directors has asked her to do. And she's doing it quite well. It's just that that board of directors is looking at the three month, six month, maybe even three year horizon. And you and I are looking at the future because I don't know if Mary knows this, but that's where we're going to spend the rest of our lives. And it's and it's something that that we talk about many times on this show. It's about building a compelling vehicle that people want to buy. That is the way that you get into the EV market. You build a vehicle that's sexy, you build a vehicle that's quick and exhilarating to drive, and you build a vehicle that people can afford. And if you can do all of that, you have a winner and you can push your EV program forward. And that's the real thing is everything has a price. If you'd have asked me a week ago, how much would I pay to lease a Nissan Leaf? The answer would have been, there's no price. I don't do leases. I don't need a Leaf. I don't want a Leaf. And then I found out from Kyle at Out of Spec, people were picking them up for $500 down, 20 bucks a month. 20 bucks? And, and I was like, wow, if I was in Colorado, I would have me a second car right now, but I'm not. And, uh, and then just all day he kept tweeting, oh, more people are showing up, more people are showing up. The dealer even put on the piece of paper with the offer, Kyle approved because it's the Kyle deal. Come in and get it. We'll get you this car two year lease, 20 bucks a month. The Nissan Leaf is not an interesting or compelling car, but for 20 oh, bucks it, it is. Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. Just stack them up. Use them as cordwood. I don't care. Uh, so, you guys, you guys, what do you think of Chevy's exciting new moves? What's it going to take? Are they going to have to license this? And if they do license FSD, Mark, I just don't know. 
who would have a system that would be willing to license it out? Hmm. Very interesting. Could be, could be anyone. It could be you and I, we should probably not start working on it, but maybe we should make some CGI renders and just see how much money That's we can idea. raise. That was an idea a few years ago. That was a very popular idea. A lot of people made a lot of money doing only that. So I prefer to sleep well at night and not be a thief. So we shall see. Uh, so guys in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it. Do me a favor, head on over to the Tesla Life Show. Uh, link in the description. Mark, Casey, and Patrick have a lot of fun. I uh, managed to yeah. harass them a bit last week uh, from yeah. a taxi cab. I was I was being full meat driven around. Sounds dirtier than it is, uh, but uh, we managed to still have some fun. And I was on Casey's Casey and right. Friends this week. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that. That was on Sunday. That yeah. was. Uh, yeah, that, that was, I didn't know how long <laughs> that show tends to go. Casey, Sunday is going to end. So uh, you guys can check that out too. I'll see if I can put a link in the description for that. Uh, yeah, and everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Uh, to my patrons, uh, channel subscribers, and YouTube members, I thank you for um, all your help. It is the reason I'm able to go on these road trips, meet these people, and why just today... For those who hung out this long, let's get okay. a little bonus here. Just today, I had a chance to have lunch with a very senior oh. chip developer who who understands chips from the top to the bottom. And I mean from all the way out to implementation, all the way down to design, all the way Wait, down to the atomic level. Are these ketchup chips or all dress chips? Well, uh, because of their capacity for AI and other things, I think all dressed. Yeah. Pretty sure that's, they've got a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of gravy. Um, I have never had those because I do not live that far north. Uh, but uh, I did go to Tim Hortons in Mexico. So that's, that's saying something right Canadianism. There. That's, that's right there. You got questions. So there's, uh, I did get to ask some very interesting questions about Dojo. Because this gentleman uh, works for a large company you've heard of that isn't Tesla. And we didn't talk about the chips that his company makes, in part because he can't, and in part because I'm here for Dojo. But of course, out of professional curiosity, he has studied Dojo very thoroughly and had some very interesting insights to share. And most importantly, when it comes time to get questions answered, I got him on speed dial. So... Uh, I was about to say thank you to him by name, and then I realized probably don't do that. Probably don't do that, but you know who you are. So, uh, yeah, so that's your overtime bonus. You're welcome, everybody who stuck it out. Thanks for hanging out, Mark. I will see you again next week.